Hi, today I'm looking at a Chromebook Plus with an Intel processor. Why? I thought it was interesting when I was talking to Intel about like trying an IN Chromebook and see like what kind of performance I could get out of it. So let's test it, look at the spec and uh, see what we think of it. So what is the Chromebook Plus certification? It's a minimum requirement of adding an Intel CPU, an IPS display that's at least 1080p, a 1080p webcam, 8 gig of RAM, and at least 128 gig of storage. The Chromebook we have here is higher spec though. We'll see that a little later. It's normally sell for $599, but you can find often it on sale at $499 or $470. Just make sure to look at the spec to get the higher end model. We got the i5 with 10 cores, two performance and eight efficient core, 512 for the SSD, 16 gig of RAM. They say up to 10 hours battery life, but like it's gonna be probably under that for us. So I feel it's a really well spec PC that feel like an office PC and not necessarily like a lower end Chromebook. You also get a very large touchpad. We'll talk a little more about it in the conclusion. The screen can lay totally flat which was amazing to take screen capture and recording video. For the I.O. we have two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, three, uh, two USB-A uh, 3.2 Gen 1, and one HDMI 1.4 and an audio combo jack. So you get plenty of good I.O. And the HDMI is a nice bonus, especially in a professional setting where not all the screen on the necessarily supporting USB-C and USB-C charging. So we'll do next a quick unboxing. The laptop is provided to me by Intel, but I'm not compensated for that video and I'm not keeping it. I already sent it back to their office. It said on the box it supports uh, Asus ADP for accidental damage protection for spill or drops and things like that. So that's a good thing. And we can see here a little more the spec in detail. You have an i5-1334U. You also have Wi-Fi uh, 6.E. So we'll test it later, but the speeds should be super good. Also support Bluetooth. Uh, it's a French keyboard. And you have a 50 watt hour battery with a 45 watt charger. Now I left the charger in the box and ignored it because I already have other charger. It's USB-C and I'm sure it's a good charger, it's just that I already have a 65 watt charger uh, that I use for testing. We can see the laptop here and my first impression is uh, how solidly built it is. It really feels like a corporate laptop and not a cheap plastic Chromebook. So that's good. You can see the front of the laptop and the back with the exhaust. On one side, you only have one USB-C. I normally use that board for charging. And on the other side, you have the combo jack, the two USB-A, one USB-C, and the HDMI 1.4. So the laptop, like I've mentioned, it have good I.O. You can set the back, some intake and a copper pipe. I was half tempted uh, to remove the cover just to see like the inside of the laptop, but because I'm returning it, I decided to not do it. Also try to do the opening with one end test. I don't know why it's important for a laptop, but uh, I was not able to do it. You can see the keyboard here. And the typing experience was pretty good. It's not the best keyboard I ever used, but like I don't have any complaint, at least for my quick look. You also don't feel a lot of flex, so it feels sturdy. And like I mentioned, you have a very large trackpad. So 
So the keyboard was comfortable and worked pretty well in my quick testing. Now that the screen is laying flat, let's look at the setup process. This is the French Canadian version of the Chromebook because I wanted also to test it at the French school board and I let them borrow it. So here they ask you if it's for personal use, a children or for work environment. Then it looked for the last version of the OS and updated the OS to that version. So we're waiting for that. Then after a reboot, it will ask to connect your Google account and made a new account uh, without uh, any history or apps just for testing. After the term and condition, you have different per permission to set up, backup, your data in the cloud, send the anesthetic usage and things like that. So we'll skip past on that. Then it will ask you to make a pin for quick login. So you can do that if you want. Now you can tell it uh, what you will use a Chromebook for and it will pre-select a list of apps for you to install that you can check if you want them. I only selected GeForce Now and Netflix uh, because that's the two things I wanted to quickly test. But of course, you can connect to the Play Store later. Okay, we made it to the desktop. There's a quick tour of what's changed uh, in the OS with this version. I also felt that everything was snappy and responsive, but we have plenty of memory and CPU uh, for that OS. So that makes sense that it would be this way. We can see here the apps that are installed by default. Uh, the one that like you didn't have to select that come with Chrome OS. I did a quick shutdown after that and let's test the webcam next. This is a webcam test using the Chromebook Plus uh, camera. First thing I wanted to test is Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, on the Chromebook, I have Wi-Fi 7 at home and you can see here that I'm getting 855 Mbps, so plenty of speed. So everything should be snappy when downloading. No, I check in settings because I wanted to see how much of the CPU was used when I was not doing anything on the desktop and the CPU usage was at 4%. The memory at 8.5 meg was at half full already. But everything feels snappy because I still have an extra 8 gig of RAM. And you can see here that it's at 52 Celsius for the CPU. And that current speed of the CPU is at 1.345 gigahertz. One thing we found interesting is that the system usage is like over 100 gig, 113 to be exact, uh, which is strange because we use it. Uh, it's the system, so it's the OS. But like on older Chromebook that we have, um, even the current version, this was like, I don't know, 20 gig or 30 gig. So I didn't really investigate it because you have a 500 gig hard drive. So there's still 400 gig of space. Uh, just so it was interesting to see the CPU, uh, the hard drive usage from the OS. I'm not sure if it's caching a lot. Then I ran Geekbench 6. So we get 1915 in single core and 7072 in multi core. And we get almost 10,000 for the Vulcan score at 9,863. I didn't really want it to compare to because it's a different OS, but it's giving us at least an idea of what kind of performance you can get with this laptop. And then run the wife, uh, Wildlife Extreme benchmark from uh, 3d mark but i think it's for like a more advanced 4k like benchmark so you only got like around 14 frame a second anyway it was just to give me an, a general idea of the performance of the chip but then because i realized that like you could use a proton with uh, the steam version of chrome os i decided to see what kind of local performance i could get with gaming now we're only using an uh, iGPU, so I didn't expect great result because you don't have a discrete card for it. But let's see. So I started downloading game on Steam at 200 meg by second. 
CPU usage was around 23%. You can hear the speaker here. I decided to try the new Marvel beaten up game by Tribute, which is uh, Maker of Shredder Revenge. It's like just a 2D game. So, and it was running fine at 60 FPS. So for 2D and light game, I think you can really get away uh, by running the game locally and it works super well. Then, of course, it wouldn't be a benchmark if I don't test Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, you could see at the beginning I was getting like only uh, 13 to 19 frames a second, so I decided to lower the settings and the resolution to see if I could get it working better. It was still at 1080p Ultra, so I lowered to medium to see what kind of like frame rate I would get. Then we got in the 30s, so I lowered the setting even more, just to see, and the resolution. So it was not the worst way I ended up play, playing Div, but you can see that even if it's a game from 2018, it was kind of like the limit to play the game. But it's not necessarily surprising, and that's not the main usage of the computer, but I just wanted to test it. Eventually got the game running in the 40s um, by lowering the resolution and I think putting the effect at low for the quality. Then Shadow of the Tomb Raiders was next. I put 720p for the resolution and medium for the settings just to see what kind of performance I would get from the benchmark. You can see the FPS going from 13 to 2025 there and that part of the benchmark you can see here that we're getting an average of 17 fps for the setting i end up putting next i end up testing streaming and netflix series in hd and the screen looked really good while uh, doing it so there was no problem with of course the wi-fi speed and things like that and i think it's a Good experience for watching it on your laptop if you want. But of course you have the HDMI out if you want to plug it to a TV or a monitor. So I decided to test GeForce Now with those games with the free tier with the 3050 desktop level card just to see what kind of frame rate you would get. That's what they expect you to do with a Chromebook or play Android games. So it's a more realistic usage versus running the game locally. We cannot play in uh, 1080p and with the ultra quality setting. It's a way smoother experience, even with like the lag you expect with cloud gaming. It doesn't feel laggy at all. So that worked well for Divinity 2. Back to Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 16 by 900. And I think I left medium or high settings. And we can see here that it will run smoother. And we can see here that we have an average of 54 FPS. So the game would be totally playable uh, on the cloud. Then I decided to see, can I play Baldur's Gate 3 over the cloud? And the answer is yes, playing the intro uh, around 60 FPS when I would walk around, I want, uh, even with all the fire effect. But of course, I have a 1.5 gig connection at home and I'm close to the Wi-Fi. So if you don't have a good uh, internet connection, that would not be the same kind of experience. So cloud gaming is really working well on this laptop. So what did I thought of the Chromebook Plus? Well, I think there's a lot of positive here. You get a 1080p screen you get 16 gig of ram a 512 uh, ssd and you also get plenty of io which i really I like you had two usb c you get some usb a the hdmi was a big deal because like for a more professional use it's good to be able to just plug it to a screen if they don't have usb c 
and also the headphone combo jack. Also, I didn't realize that like that there was a Steam version for Chrome OS. That wouldn't be a big deal, but like with uh, the Steam Deck that got released and using Proton now, that means that technically all your Windows PC game are now compatible with the Chromebook. Of course, you're going to be limited about what the iGPU or the GPU, if you uh, have one, is able to do. But that makes it more interesting to play some light game locally. Also, of course, you will run in the limitation of graphic quite fast on this Chromebook. And this is adding a, where adding a fast Wi-Fi, it's 6E in that case, can be an option for streaming game, uh, totally in your Android games. So that was a bonus that I didn't expect while testing it. And that was what was interesting, that I really feel that like if you're doing most of your work online and your workflow doesn't need a specific software that is Windows only, this laptop could definitely work uh, to do like a portable workstation. Uh, for me, there's limitation because I would use like software like Power BI or uh, SQL management server, but even then, I could put them in a VM and uh, use a Chromebook. I'm also kind of curious how Windows uh, 11 would work on this laptop. I didn't decide to try to switch it, but I'm just curious versus the N150 that I had that was always at 100% like CPU usage, uh, if this uh, laptop would work well with Windows overhead. Also, another advantage is being a CPU from 2023 means that normally you should still have like eight years of updates for it. That one issue with Chromebook, like if you go on a website like Best Buy, you can still find Chromebook that are old and like maybe running a processor that is like six or seven year old. And then maybe you won't have any updates or you will have a short like windows to get update on those Chromebooks. So that's something that like to be really careful about. On the negative, sure, I would like to have a higher resolution screen. I would like better speaker. They were loud enough, but like depending on the style of music, if you go with metal or something like that, you can see that like they had difficulty to keep up, but they were totally usable. And I also understand that for that price point, like uh, it's $599, but often it's on sale at $499. So you need to be careful because they also have a version with only 8 gig of RAM and uh, 128 for the SSD, so make sure that like you look at the right version. But I understand that like to me that price point they decided like to cut something, like a, at least better one requirement, at least give you an, a like a better spec laptop. Now I'm kind of curious if they gonna update those spec because it was from 2023. But at least like I feel that you have a competent machine. Uh, if you want to use it for work or for just like Chrome OS. Also I had issue with the trackpad. It's very large, so it's nice. But like when I would like push on it, sometimes it would take a second or two uh, to detect movement. And sometimes it's like, is the trackpad working? And then I have to redo the movement a couple of time. Eventually I think I got used to the sensibility of it. It's just that like, it's not instantaneous like most of my laptop. So I'm not sure if it was a Chrome OS or a driver issue. I update everything is up to date, so I don't think it's broken or anything. It just, I feel that maybe I need to adjust the sensibility. I didn't really look in Chrome OS settings for that. So I was kind of impressed for my first experience with a Chromebook. Of course, it was interesting when we were comparing with like Chromebook that some student would have, and you could see smaller screen and everything is so plasticky. I feel that like when I look at this laptop, I feel it's a corporate laptop, solidly made and well built. So when I, that was my first impression when I got it out of the box and I was like, oh, that's kind of like a business laptop. So I think it was quite positive. Thanks for watching.